The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. David Ramirez here with The Narrow Door, a partner outreach ministry with Fred Jordan Missions and Jordan Outreach Missions. Today we're here in Coachella Valley and we're filling up our warehouse. And as you can see behind us, our warehouse was a little empty. And at each month, our goal is to try to pass out as much food as possible. And today we're getting a blessing of 19,000 pounds of food. We couldn't have done this without your generosity and your support in partnering with us to be able to bless families in need. In fact, right here in the Valley, we have done over 500,000 meals just during COVID season, and it's continuing to grow. So just like a Pastor Joe out in Los Angeles, their numbers are rising. Same here, right in the Valley. So partner with us today and help us reach a family in need. Again, we couldn't have done it without you. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Well, here I am downtown Los Angeles on Skid Row at Fred Jordan Mission. And what a great day it is. We're just having a great time serving Jesus by serving others. You know, the last couple of months is, it's had its challenges for sure with COVID and protest and just all of this stuff going on in our world. Having to wear masks, social distancing, isolation. But you know, here on Skid Row, the people are here every day. These are our guests. This is our family on Skid Row of human beings that God created in His image and in His likeness, just like me and just like you watching and viewing today, that need help, that need hope, that need love. And that's why we're always here at the Fred Jordan Mission and have been for over 75 years, declaring and demonstrating the love of Jesus. And I wanna share with you some of those stories, how it's been so awesome over the last few months because We've gone through Mother's Day, we've gone through Father's Day, and those were really, really special time. Many of you would say, well, wow, there's a lot of fathers on Skid Row, but their children aren't there, their families aren't there, they're there. So what kind of fathers are they? And I just wanted to share with you some stories about the fathers on Skid Row and similar to the mothers on Skid Row. You know, are there fathers on Skid Row who abandon their children? Yes, I'm sure there are. Are there fathers who were not the best dads and made mistakes? I I'm sure there are. But my question to you is, if you're a parent, a father or a grandparent, I'm a father, I know this, I've made a lot of mistakes with my kids throughout the years. I've, I've messed up. I've had to say sorry and repent for the things that I've done that that were not the best, that were not the right way to handle my kids the way Jesus would want me to. Fathers, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. What matters is moving forward. I encourage fathers who have messed up, who have missed the mark, who maybe weren't there for their kids to start today as a new and fresh day. Because how many of you know that with Jesus, Every day can be a new day. Every day can be a day that we can start over. We can turn from our wicked ways and we can turn to Jesus in an instant and have our life turned around for good, for eternity. And so I was sharing with the men, look men, if you failed, if you've messed up, if you've hurt your children, if you've abandoned your children, if you weren't the best father, start today. And I wanted to let them know that that there's a father that we can look to always, who always does it right. And that's our heavenly father, God who created us. The Bible says that God created us in his image and in his likeness, all of us. 
It doesn't matter what color we are, where we were born, where we were raised. The bottom line is God created you, God created me, and God created all of us in His image and in His likeness. And so we are all God's children. The thing that separates us though is our sin from God. That if they're not walking with God, if they walked away from God, if maybe they're just kind of like hiding from God or doing some things they shouldn't, then they're living in guilt and shame and conviction that all they have to do is turn from their wicked ways, turn from their sins and turn to Jesus. And it reminds me of this scripture that I wanted to share with you today. This scripture that is so important from 1 John 1, 9, and it says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And he will also cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the awesome thing about God, that he can take a mess and make a miracle. And he can take our lives that were upside down and turn them right side up. He's the only one that can take a past that's had many mistakes, many problems, many heartaches, and turn it around. The Bible says that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Don't forget today, just like I share with all of our guests and everyone I meet on these streets, that I get the opportunity to share Jesus and his word with, that it's never too late to turn from the life you're living and turn to Jesus so he can correct our lives and bless our lives and forgive us of all of our sins. And of course, we know that when our hope is in Jesus, when our faith is in Jesus, we have the joy of the Lord that gives us strength to go through every day and turn our lives around. In just a minute, I wanna share an incredible story about a man from the streets who was homeless for many, many years and God changed his life. And now what is he doing to give back to God, to touch other men's lives? I'll tell you in just a moment. I'll be back in a few. Well, you know, we're all facing uncertain times right now. Ever since COVID hit back in May, millions have lost their jobs and we're all hurting. But you know, when we come together and know we're not alone, it makes a difference. The Mission Downtown has seen an increase of 300% in feeding those who need to eat. These are not only homeless we typically serve, these are people who had jobs not long ago. And now out here in the Coachella Valley, we're seeing families drive up hundreds who are just in need of a box of groceries that will get them through a week. And so we're so grateful, people like you, that want to donate $25 to hand these box of groceries out. You know, I've heard Willie say so many times that hunger never takes a day off. And it's so true. We have people who are hungry and are hurting. And you know, if you do a little something and we do a little something, great things can happen. And we can get these families fed and we can touch one life at a time because we know an act of kindness never goes forgotten. So will you join with us and donate $25 can make a huge difference and an impact in the life of a family and those on Skid Row who are hungry and hurting. Let's continue making a difference and we're gonna get through this together. So God bless you. Thank you for your love gift. There's no gift that's too small or too big that we together can't continue daily making a difference in the lives of those people who are hungry and hurting. So God bless you for your support of Fred Jordan Mission. Your love and prayers are much appreciated. As I was sharing with you right before Gina shared with you, I was talking about a homeless man who God had changed his life. And I wanted to share that with you. But first, I just wanted you to know this. The Bible says this, and it's very important for all of us who are training or in, and preparing children for life. It's also important for uh, those who may be grandparents. I'm not a grandparent yet, but uh, hopefully one day soon and you know, in the next few years or decade, my kids, Brooke or Bryce, will get married and have children and then I'll be a granddad and a grandpa and that'll be pretty cool. But no rush, kids. But it's so important to train up a child in the ways of the Lord. And I'll tell you, that was not only just um, 
uh, advised to me by my parents, but I think it was kind of pounded into me the importance of knowing God's word, of knowing the truth, because the truth, the Bible says, will set us free. And there's a passage from Proverbs that I wanted to share with you that we that we share all the time with our kids and that my parents shared with me so many times I can't even tell you. In fact, I, I don't, it's from Proverbs 2, 2, and I don't even have to look at the Bible to, to read it. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he was old, he will not depart. And you know what, spoken or unspoken, those words have lasted my lifetime, knowing that God was the one that was being filled in my mind with his word, his thoughts and his ways, because the Bible's clear, our ways are not God's ways, God's ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, he's perfect, he's holy and he's righteous and we're not. And so I was taught how important it is to grow up in God's word, to know God's word, and, and to study God's word and have it in our hearts. And so training up a child in the way he should go, in the way of the Lord, in knowing Jesus, in knowing what salvation is, forgiveness of our sins, what it's like to walk as a Christian was so important. And I got blessed with that. I was so blessed as Fred and Willie Jordan were my mom and dad to learn those lessons. But you know, there's so many I talk to every day that didn't have a father, didn't have a mother. And I wanted to share with you about a man, true story, a man who lived on these streets, was homeless for many, 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 many years, but now has a home, has a room, has his apartment, and is not living on the streets anymore. You know, he came here just the other day and he said, you know what, I've been homeless, I've, I've been on these streets. It's been really difficult, but, but God has blessed me. And now I have a home. I have a place to stay. I'm not homeless on the streets anymore. And God put on my heart after hearing God's word and having been spiritually trained at Fred Jordan Mission and heard God's word over and over, the importance of giving back. God spoke to this man's heart who lived on these very streets for years and said, go to Fred Jordan Mission and sow into the ministry so others like you can continue to hear the word of God. And he came just the other day and our director James was telling the story and hopefully in, in this show or another show soon, you can hear the story right from him. But this man came and, and he gave a tithe. He gave a tithe of his income to Fred Jordan Missions. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome to me that, that God touched him and blessed him in such a way that he gave back to the ministry so that God could use that tithe and make a difference in others' men, their lives and other families and children. You know, there's nothing better than seeing God turn a life around. He did mine, he did that man's, He's done so many here on the streets. And that's just one testimony of literally testimony after testimony after testimony of God's power working on these streets, even 75 years later. God's miraculous hand wants to touch all of our lives, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But we have to trust him. We have to give him our hearts and we have to walk with him. As I got here today, our director James then told me that this man came back today. This very day he came back and the Lord told him to come back and not give a tithe because he already gave his tithe. But the man came back with an envelope with cash in it. I don't know how much it was, it doesn't matter. God will multiply that and bless so many more because of it. But he came and he said, God put on my heart to now give an offering. He gave a tithe, a portion of, of his income, and now it was an offering to even bless more people. And I remember as I heard it, and one of my other staff, Vanna told me, as she was just in tears, that this man who sacrificed for so long on the streets, Jesus changed his life, and then he came back and he said, the Lord told me to come give an offering to Fred Jordan Mission because I've been fed spiritually and I want others to be fed spiritually. 
train up a child in the way he should go. I was fortunate enough to be trained up in God's word. Even though I strayed for many years, I made a lot of mistakes, but many on the streets haven't been trained in God's word, haven't been taught God's word and the importance of that relationship. And that's why we're here every day to declare and to demonstrate the love of Jesus. Fred Jordan Mission has been serving for 75 years. Not a day, not a week, not a decade, but seven and a half decades. It's been serving Jesus by serving the poor, the needy, the homeless, the helpless, and the hopeless with hope. Every day at Fred Jordan Mission, we serve those in need. And it's all made possible because of, of course, the calling of Jesus in our lives, in my family's life, but it's also because of you. We couldn't do it without you. We don't get federal, state, or even any kind of city money. We do everything by generous friends and donors like you. We serve the least of these, the needy, in Jesus' name every day and have for 75 years because of you. If you stand with us already, I want you to know thank you so much. We couldn't do it without you. But as the needs continue to grow in Los Angeles at the Mission, and with children and families in the Coachella Valley. We need your help more than ever. We just purchased a couple new trucks that are putting out over 85,000 pounds of food alone to children and families in the Coachella Valley. And the needs have grown downtown on Skid Row at the Mission as well. If you haven't ever partnered with us, consider it today because together we can do great things in touching our community as the first church did back in the day, by serving Jesus, by serving others. God bless you. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. You know, I wanted to just share these last two passages with you that hopefully will encourage you as we encourage those who live here on Skid Row. Galatians 6, 9 says this, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. Listen, don't lose heart, don't lose hope. Keep your hope based in something sure, certain and secure, and that is in God's hands. That is in the blood of Jesus and that great sacrifice that he made on the cross when he died for yours and my sins. That's what we tell on Skid Row every day because if we trust in him and our hope lies in God's hands, then we know that our future, no matter what happens on this earth, our future will be instantly when we're gone from here with Jesus and our Father God in heaven. And the last one is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I know this one by heart also. It was just pounded into me, and I'm glad it was. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Not maybe, not might, not hopefully. God will direct your path. It's a promise from God. It's a promise from His Word, and God never goes back on His promises. Look, even on our best day, don't trust in our own understanding and wisdom because even on our best day, it's just not as good as God's. But trust the Lord with everything within you, all of your heart, and He will direct your path. Will you continue, if you already do, standing with us? If you don't, would you consider partnering with us to continue to touch the lives of men, women, and children for days, years, and decades to come as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus. Today, if you haven't given your heart to Jesus, give it to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Wash me white as snow. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I love you, Jesus, and what you did for me on the cross. I believe I receive you today, and he'll come into your heart. He'll, he'll remove your sin as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says. 
and he will be your Lord and Savior. And you'll know that if something happened, like if something happened to me on these streets right now, I have no fear because I know that if I'm gone from this body, I'll be with Jesus and so will you. I know this time has been challenging for most people and our heart goes out to everyone dealing with this unprecedented situation caused by the coronavirus. Job losses, financial hardship, food insecurity, lack of supplies evident by the shelves of our grocery stores where the demand is greater than the supply. If you can imagine as difficult as it is for all of us who are quarantined in our homes, separated from family and friends, but for most, we still have a roof over our heads, a mattress and a pillow to lay our heads. Consider those unfortunate souls who live on the streets. They stand in a strange intersection of crisis where homelessness and disease meet. Fred Jordan Mission is open. Yes, open. We are complying with every standard of prevention and protection as issued by the City of Los Angeles. But we must continue to help meet the needs and feed the homeless. We need your help today. For every $10 donated, we are able to feed five healthy meals. Our meal provisions have grown 300%. We open the windows at 9 a.m. serving breakfast. At 2 p.m. we serve a hot meal. And most days we serve meals until the food runs out. Please know this, Fred Jordan Mission is supported by you, our caring friends. No government or county or city support, only you. Please give today. Help us continue to provide meals for those who have nothing. God bless you. I want to tell you a quick story about how God is showing up and showing off. In fact, right here in our warehouse, you can see behind me that our food is short. In fact, my guys here called me up and they said, hey Dave, we've got 400 families that we have to serve next week and there's hardly any food in the warehouse. What are we going to do? and it reminded me of a story of going to one of our local outreaches as we're serving, knocking on doors and delivering food boxes to families. And as I show up to this apartment complex, I notice these little kids running up to the doors and putting notes on each one of those doors. As I walk up to the doors, I notice that on them are letters that say that these people are behind in their rent. And I was surprised to see these little kids doing it. Well, as I go through the park, I knock on this last door and it's where those little kids were at. And this lady was a little nervous to open up the door. But as we shared with her about what God is doing and delivering these food boxes and how it was a blessing from our partners and our community, she opened up her door a little bit more and she accepted the blessing and she prayed with us. And we poured into her about local churches that were doing some amazing things and blessing families. A few weeks later, we show up and we see her and she was more than willing to open up those doors. And immediately she says, you know what I need more than the food box was just that prayer, just that, that touch that you guys did. So we prayed with her. A few weeks later, we received some mail and I saw it was the lady's name. And as I open it up, she writes how she was, she's the manager for this apartment complex. And she was embarrassed to go even up to families that she, that she takes care of because she doesn't want to give them the bad news that they're behind on their rent. Because as well, she was behind two months of her own rent. Well, she said how she reached out to the local churches that we connected her to and that she was blessed in abundance, that they connected her with partnering, partnering ministries. She says at that time, she's now caught up and she wanted to do something for us. She says it's not much, but it was a $1.25 check that she wrote to us. You see, even the smallest amounts make a huge difference in families' lives. In fact, today, we're getting ready to fill back up this pantry with 19,000 pounds of food. And again, we couldn't have done that without your generosity and your partner with us. So please give what you can, $1.25, $25, or maybe you feel in your heart that you wanna be able to bless in abundance because God has shown up and shown off in your own life. Again, we couldn't have done it without you. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org.
It's been such an awesome day here on Skid Row. You know, one of my favorite things to do is share with you, honestly, right here from the streets. There's just so much activity. There's so much going on everywhere. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's six in the morning, six at night or 2 a.m. It just doesn't matter. Skid Row is alive always. And you know what? It's filled with God's children because we're all God's children. And you know, I've said it to you many times. I'll probably say it many times in the future because it was pounded in my head by my mom and dad. But a little song when I was a kid, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And you know, we are all his little children, all of us. And he loves us all, no matter what we look like, no matter how we act, no matter how we um, behave, he loves us in spite of everything that we do that is even not good. How do I know that? Because he sent Jesus to die for us while we were yet sinners. And so he loves us. I just wanna encourage you, Jesus loves you. And, and as he loves you and loves me, will you stand with us so we can continue to love all of those here on Skid Row, all of those who, who live and breathe and, and have their being here. And also for all those children that we serve and all those families out in the Coachella Valley, we need you because we don't get state, government, federal and city help, but it's partners like you that help us so that we can continue to declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those who are homeless, helpless, hopeless, because hope served here is what we do every day because of you. God bless you, hang in there and trust in the Lord with all your heart, he will direct your path. When the night comes and there's no one and you feel hopeless and abandoned, just take my hand and lift your eyes. Change is coming. Love has Join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.